Hi everyone, it's Miss Mariah coming to you with some more book recommendations today. Since it's April 1st, we're kicking off Poetry Month, so I thought I'd share some novels in verse with you. Novels in verse are books that are written entirely in poems and they tell an entire story. These are actually some of my favorite kind of books, so I'm excited to share these with you today. The first is Redwood and Ponytail by K.A. Holt. Kate, aka Ponytail, is perfect. She's a cheerleader vying for team captain, but is that really what she wants or is it just her mother's own desires projecting onto her? Tam, aka Redwood, is a confident volleyball player who gets along with everyone. But is the t real Tam match what they s all the people see when they look at her? When, they, when these two girls meet at seventh grade registration, everything changes. They become inseparable. Kate even leaves the cheer squad's lunch table and starts eating with Tam. But as their relationship blooms, they start to struggle to understand what is really happening between them and then to accept that it's something that's more than friendship. So this is a Romeo and Juliet type of story, complete even with narration and commentary from the three Alexes. Alex, 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 chilling in the shadows, watching everything. Watching everything, Alex, 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 chilling in the shadows. Chilling in the shadows, watching everything. Alex, Alex, Alex. We see all, hear all, know all. We know all, see all, hear all. We hear all, know all, see all. We three queens, we three queens, we three queens. So we hear from the three Alexes throughout the entire story as different things happen. So not only is this story about accepting who you really are, but it's also about learning that your own happiness is more important than pleasing others. And you can read this book on Hoopla or on Overdrive, plus the audiobook, if you'd rather listen to it, is available on Overdrive as well. Next, we have The Colors of the Rain by R.L. Tolson. It's 1972, Houston, Texas. A bar fight turns into a car accident and suddenly everything changes for Polly's family. Polly's father was the man in that twisted up car and he had two bullet holes in his chest. And not only that, it turns out that before the accident, his dad killed a white man to protect a black one. Now Polly's family are the outcasts of the town. But for Polly, his worst fear isn't the scorn of his peers, it's that his mother will leave too. So when that day comes and Polly is sent to live with his Aunt B, he really struggles to cope with his emotions. Meanwhile, Polly's new school is desegregating. So desegregation is when Back in like the 1950s, 1960s, they started having black kids go to the same schools as white kids. Texas was a little bit behind on that, and so they didn't start desegregating until the early 70s. And people were really mad about it. They protested. They were so angry. But Polly, he doesn't understand that. He doesn't get why they're so mad. But then he meets Greg. Greg is a black boy in Polly's class. And Polly, for some reason, feels this unexplicable hatred overcome him, which leads to some bullying. Now, while this book is about segregation and overcoming racism, it's also about a family learning how to deal with loss and all of the pain that comes along with it. Then we have 
Forget Me Not by Ellie Terry. Every time her mom goes through a breakup, Calliope is dragged along as they move to a new city. This time, they've settled in St. George, Utah in an apartment complex where Jinsong also lives. Jinsong likes Callie. He thinks they could be friends. But then, on Callie's first day of school, her strange clothes and the weird way she acts makes her a target for teasing. Now, Jinsong is a pretty popular kid, and he wants to protect that popularity, so he starts avoiding Callie at school. What Jin Song and everyone else don't know is that Callie has Tourette syndrome and she's been instructed to hide it by her mother and even one of her therapists. But trying to stop the tics and hide them only makes them worse and so the kids only get meaner and meaner. And unfortunately, Jin Song doesn't stand up for her. So this story is about accepting who you are and also learning not to care what other people think. This is a great one for fans of Wonder. So if you liked Wonder, I would highly recommend checking this out. And it's available, the audio version, on Hoopla and Overdrive. And lastly, we have kind of a becoming a classic, a big award winner, The Crossover by Kwame Alexander. Josh and Jordan Bell are unstoppable on the basketball court, following in the footsteps of their basketball legend father. But as they start the eighth grade, Jordan starts spending a lot more time with the new girl, and so the brother's relationship kind of starts to rift. So Josh takes us through the ups and downs of that year with his raps and rhymes that are sure to leave an impression. And I'll share one with you that is one of my favorites. Filthy McNasty is a mythical man-child of rather dubious distinction, always agitating, combinating, and elevating his game. He dribbles, fakes, then takes the rock to the glass, fast and on blast. But watch out when he shoots, or you'll get schooled, fooled, uncooled. Cause when filthy gets hot, he has a slammerific shot. It's dunkalicious classy, supersonic sassy, and D-O-W-N, right in your face, McNasty. You really do not have to like basketball to love this book, speaking from experience. So give it a try. It's available on Overdrive as both an ebook and an audiobook. And another cool thing, it just got released as a graphic novel. They recreated it as a graphic novel, and that's available on Overdrive as well. I hope you will try some of those novels in verse and really enjoy them as much as I do. Thanks for listening.